Hello, Gemini. Thank you for joining me for your September monthly forecast. This is for the sun or the ascendant. I am sorry that I'm doing this a little bit later than, than I would like. But here goes. This month begins with quite a big focus, to be honest, on the part of your situation which is to do with your emotional bearings, your foundations. It's not just in terms of home. It can be where you feel most comfortable in your life in general. The atmosphere of situations is going to take on a much greater importance for you. Obviously, your great gift is your mind and the ability to communicate with lots of different people in lots of different ways, very bright and articulatedly. But Mercury, your ruler, does come out of shadow early this month because it had been going uh, backwards, as you know, since the 26th of July in the sign of Leo, which is all about your everyday thinking, your everyday uh, thoughts. But because of that retrograde, although it's come to a close, it's coming back to the point at the start of this month where it emerges through the point where the retrograde began. So if there is something around a communicational issue which has seemed a little bit bogged down and not flowing quite as well as you would like, some early progress is possible uh, from the 6th. There's also a quarter moon on that day as well in your sign. The suggestion here is that you may find yourself in the following week having to balance those more emotional and foundational issues that I spoke of with what feels comfortable for you as an individual. Someone around you may be a little bit out of sorts. This could be a family member. If you share accommodation with someone else, you may be more conscious of your need for room or the impact that other people have on your space. But by the 9th, well, Mercury then moves into the sign of Virgo, one of its two home zones along with yours. Mercury in Virgo is very much to do with the detail of things, and it's to do with thinking in a very dry way, which gives some kind of tangible result from whatever it is we're focusing upon. And I think the chances are, Something could be altering around the base of your existence, so that could be your home. But it could see you, as Mercury moves on the night, have a really important conversation with someone about something from the past. Uh, you could be recollecting, there could be a reunion. But because there is a grand Earth trine with Saturn and also Uranus, which will last for a few days... This can be a springboard to better understand your needs when it comes to your immediate environment, wherever you find yourself. But of course, on the night, there is also a new moon. And this new moon gives you the opportunity to perhaps redecorate, move your prop, uh, furnishings around, declutter, perhaps think about starting a business from home, because this new moon forges a beautiful link with Jupiter. Uh, and also feeds into the location of Pluto. So these two links for you are very much about making the most of your assets. Whatever they may be, you can squeeze a bit more from them. And imagination can be part of this too, because Neptune's on the other side of the heavens as well, remember. And that's having a big impact on how you're thinking about your more worldly uh, activities. But Uranus and Saturn are going to be feeding into this as well. So it's a chance to be enterprising, to think about your resources, perhaps a bit more reflectively, uh, but you can do so in a positive way. Now, from the 11th through to the end of the month, well, Mars is going to be clashing with Uranus again. Mars moves back into the sign of Aquarius. Now, for you, this is a great location insofar as it gives you a desire of adventurism, of independence. But with Uranus locked away through till November in a very tender part of your horoscope, I think what can happen from the 11th through to the end of the month is an issue that you might ordinarily turn the other cheek to, can take on an almost furnace-like intensity and could get under your skin a little bit. You could discover something that you didn't know before on a point of principle or even a, a basic fact which also could be very surprising. At the heart of this month, Venus and Mars are also going to be in a tete-a-tete. -tete. Now, Venus, for you, initially, is in a gorgeous location because 
it's in the part of your horoscope that's to do with playfulness and to do with love and romance. But then it gets much more practical for the rest of the month. But it's not the end of the opportunity to be more outgoing because both the Sun and your ruler Mercury are going to be moving into the sign of Libra for the last 10 days. And this gives you a, a, a wonderful opportunity to rejuvenate your enthusiasm over anything that you feel passionate about. And it can see you wanting to be more playful, go out and about, mix and mingle much more and demonstrate your classic Gemini qualities. There is also a full moon, and this full moon occurs in the sign of Aries. So there may be some balance to be found between the passions you want to pursue as an individual and what you need to do in terms of the collective response to your life. In other words, your responsibility to friends. And also thinking about your longer term future. So I think there is going to be times this month when you could feel a little quieter, a little more reflective, but there's a lot to learn from this, and you can emerge from this and feel more outgoing, more spontaneous, more entertaining. And if, in a romantic context, you are thinking about things carefully on the back of Venus's square with Mars, and also in terms of uh, the more introverted energies of Mercury being in the fourth house, which can see us bottling up our feelings a little bit, I have to be honest. But once it emerges, you're going to be that much more outgoing. Now, the other thing to mention is that Jupiter and Pluto do retain a fantastic link all month. Jupiter is, of course, traditionally about good fortune. Pluto is about change. Pluto can be about ruthless change, where we are so mindful of getting what we want from situations that we sweep opposition apart, or it can see other people inflict that kind of energy upon us. Sometimes also Pluto will root out of our lives things that we're not even conscious that we don't really need anymore. And that can be very disconcerting too. But in this combination, I think there's every chance that if you're working hard at something you feel passionate about and that you enjoy, there could be something that falls into place very well for you around earnings or a job this month. I do hope so. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for all the wonderfully kind comments and feedback and suggestions about dealing with my rheumatoid arthritis. I sincerely appreciate it. I'd love it if you would like or comment on this video, or if you've yet to do so, please do subscribe to my channel. But for now, good luck and goodbye. Hello, thank you so much for watching my video. I'd love you to join me at my Horoscope Ace app. You can find this at www.horoscope-ace.com. You can use it through Android, iOS, Apple or Facebook. Check out your Ascendant or your Moon site or download your free birth chart. There's all your favourite videos, plus there are daily, weekly, monthly and yearly horoscopes for general, love, Chinese and Indian astrology. If your passion is tarot, there's my brilliant three-card money or love tarot readings too. And it's all there at www.horoscope-ace.com. Thank you.